Hello everyone. Welcome to today's presentation, Tsunamis, the Threat to the Gulf of Mexico, brought to you by your National Weather Service office located in Corpus Christi, Texas. The topics we'll be discussing today are basic tsunami facts, tsunami warning signs, and how to respond to protect yourself and others. And at the end, we'll share a tsunami survival story from a very special girl named Tilly. What is a tsunami, you ask? The word tsunami is Japanese, and it translates into harbor wave. It is a series of long ocean waves that can travel as fast as 500 miles per hour in open ocean. This is as fast as a commercial airplane. Tsunami waves can strike the coast 5 to 40 minutes apart of each other. These enormous waves can reach 15 to 30 feet in height or more, and can penetrate several miles inland. Contrary to the general belief, the first wave is not always the largest. Here is a photo of the flooding and devastation that occurred from the 2011 Japan tsunami. From this event, a total of 15,891 people lost their lives. If you're wondering how tsunamis are generated, I can tell you that the vast majority of them are caused by earthquakes and underwater landslides, but they can also be generated by volcanic eruptions and asteroid impacts. The most common tsunami is caused by earthquakes. When an underwater earthquake occurs, there is an abrupt uplift of the sea floor, which displaces a column of water and generates the tsunami waves. As these waves move over shallow water, they slow down and build in height. The strong currents and huge waves then become a threat to life and property. There are areas that are known as earthquake hotspots because the probability of experiencing big earthquakes is greatest in those areas. The red and blue area you see highlighted in this image is known as the Pacific Ring of Fire, and it is an earthquake hotspot. Even though the Atlantic Ocean doesn't experience earthquakes and tsunamis as often as the Pacific Ocean, there are some areas prone to tsunamis, such as where the Caribbean tectonic plate and the North American plate interact with each other. This image shows all the earthquakes that have occurred along the Caribbean tectonic plate in a span of 20 years, from 1977 to 1997. As you can see, there have been thousands of earthquakes in this region. If a tsunami were to be generated outside the Gulf of Mexico, let's say near the Yucatan Peninsula, the travel time for that tsunami to reach South Texas would be close to three hours. So that means we would only have three hours to respond to the event and reach for higher ground here in South Texas. Underwater landslides are the second most common cause of tsunamis. They can either occur underwater or above the water, causing a displacement of sediment that in turn displaces the water and generates a tsunami. In these photos, you can see the caldera, or the large basin-like depression of the Cumbria Vieja volcano located in Spain on a small island named La Palma. This volcano could potentially erupt and generate a landslide tsunami that could in turn affect the people that live in the vicinity of this volcano. In 1958, an earthquake in Alaska caused a landslide that generated a mega tsunami of 1,720 feet. In this image, you can see where the water level is usually located and how high the water rose into the mountains. Researchers have identified areas in the Gulf of Mexico that have a potential to generate a landslide tsunami. As you can see, one of these areas is close to our coast here in South Texas. The area closest to our coast is known as the East Breaks, and it's an area where sediment from the rivers in Texas have been collecting. If a tsunami were to be generated in the East Breaks area, it would take approximately an hour and a half to reach our coast. Tsunamis cause tremendous damage and loss of life. In the Americas alone, since 1692 to 2016, 
4,561 lives have been lost due to tsunamis. In the Western Pacific for the same period, the death toll reaches over a half a million. In order to warn the people of tsunami dangers, the National Weather Service has a warning system in place. The warnings for the continental USA are produced by the National Tsunami Warning Center located in Alaska. The Caribbean countries and Hawaii receive their warnings from the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center in Hawaii. These offices are opened 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, and are continuously providing service to protect our lives and property. Tsunami warning centers collect data from seismic stations throughout the world. In this map, you can see some of those stations. Tsunami warning centers also collect and use buoy data. Here is the location of all DART buoys, a specialized buoy for tsunami detection. DART stands for Deep Ocean Assessment and Reporting of Tsunamis. The dart buoy detects the shaking on the seafloor and measures changes to the ocean. The buoy immediately sends out the information via satellite to the tsunami warning centers, who in turn make the decision on what type of message to send out to the public, depending on the tsunami threat potential. Let's move on to tsunami warning signs. Not all tsunamis have the same warning signs. But here are some warning signs that could aid you to recognize the threat if you ever experience it. Strong shaking of more than 20 to 30 seconds in duration that make it difficult for you to stand up. Water retreating or pushing in from the ocean. A loud roar from the sea. And very strong currents are all potential tsunami indicators. It is never safe to stay at the beach when a tsunami is approaching, not even if you're surfing. The force of a tsunami can be compared to a wall of liquid concrete moving toward you. You cannot swim nor ride along a tsunami. So how should we respond to save lives? Whenever you go to a beach, pay attention to the warning signs and stay alert. If a tsunami message is issued, move away from the hazard areas run to higher ground or away from the beach, or get to a third floor or higher. If there is no other choice, climb a tall tree. And if available, follow the signs to a tsunami assembly point. Stay in the safe area until authorities indicate the danger has passed and it is safe to return. Many hours may pass before it is deemed safe. But what kind of protection do we have here along the Texas coast? If you've ever visited the local beaches, you don't typically see much terrain other than the dunes. Most of the Texas coast is pretty flat. Usually there is no higher ground. What can you do then? Look for a sturdy building with more than three floors above ground, such as a hotel or a condominium, and go to the highest level. Either way, if you feel a strong earthquake at the beach, get to high ground immediately. Some countries, like Japan, have tsunami evacuation platforms. These platforms are to be used in cases where the inventory of vertical shelters is not sufficient, or in areas where there are no buildings close enough to the beach for people to evacuate in time. Maybe this is something we should consider in the future for highly prone tsunami areas in the USA. Tilly, a very special young girl. In October 2003, Australian seismologist Phil Cummins predicted, there will be a massive earthquake and tsunami near the island of Sumatra, and it's just a matter of time. Therefore, we must implement an Indian Ocean Tsunami Warning System. The following year, on December 26, 2004, a tsunami struck the area. In 2004, a 10-year-old British girl named Tilly Smith traveled with her family to a Thai resort in Southeast Asia, 
while she was vacationing there on the 26th of December, the ocean began to swell. She immediately shouted frantically to her parents that a tsunami was coming. Seeing their daughter so frightened about what was happening and also noticing that the beach was changing rapidly, they ran back to the hotel. After hearing Tilly's hysterical screams, the other tourists followed Tilly's family back to the hotel. In the end, they took refuge on the third floor of the resort. They survived the 2004 Indian Ocean Tsunami. This tsunami claimed the lives of more than 200,000 people. Tilly learned about tsunamis only two weeks prior to traveling to Thailand. Tilly's story comes to show us the importance of knowing and detecting these subtle changes in the ocean and at the beach. The age doesn't matter. We can all make the difference just by having the knowledge and by being prepared. This is an image of a village in Banda Este, Indonesia, after being struck by the 2004 Indian Ocean Tsunami. On March 11, 2011, the world got another wake-up call, the Japan Tsunami. This tsunami was generated by a 9.1 magnitude earthquake off the coast of Honshu, Japan. This tsunami took the lives of thousands of people and had a tremendous impact over this area. In this image, you can see the aftermath of the tsunami waves over Miyako Iwate, Japan. Notice how the enormous waves destroyed everything in their path and slammed boats and ships against houses and structures. So, remember the tsunami warning signs and follow the tsunami safety rules. Pay attention to warning signs and act fast. Learning these steps can make all the difference. This concludes our presentation. We hope that you now have a better understanding of tsunamis. We cannot prevent another tsunami from occurring, but we can do our best to educate in order to prevent the loss of life and property. For more information on tsunamis, please visit www.nws.noaa.gov forward slash om forward slash tsunami.